recording. Uh, the title is something about uh, Einstein equation on space times of higher uh, dimensions and uh, their relations to CR manifolds, which is where I, I, I'm coming from, and to Kähler manifolds. So I'm, I'm, I, I will be trying to uh, explain all the words I will be using. So if, if you haven't, uh, are not so familiar with, with that, um, then that's um, hopefully uh, possible to fix. Uh, it is, uh, the topic is related to mathematical physics, but I'm, I'm not a mathematical physicist. I more maybe a mathematician uh, who is uh, trying to get inspired by physics. So physicists come, come very often come up with um, very interesting ad hoc constructions and then mathematicians try to understand what, what is it actually what the physicists are doing here. Uh, and in the ideal case, we could come up that then with some mathematical structures which physicists uh, find uh, fitting for their purposes. So what, what we are here interested in, and maybe I start with a low uh, uh, dimensional um, situation, we, we are interested in, in some space times. Space times, which are uh, Lorentzian manifolds. In the easiest case, this is just a piece of the four dimensional space. Uh, we will go up in higher dimensions, but starting just as R4, maybe as a chart in our um, Lorentzian manifold. And uh, on this chart, we have a Lorentzian metric. Lorentzian metric, which means at each tangent space, we have a, a tensor, a metric tensor, a G, well, G, say, um, Good. Good. Yes? Uh, in your shared screen, I have uh, these small window. This meeting is being recorded. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It? It's, 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 it's recorded, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's blocking what you are writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can try to write a little bit uh, larger, but um, no, yeah, yeah. this uh, extra window. You can, I think, you can uh, make it disappear. Yeah, uh, you probably don't see it. There's a small window about uh, these meetings being recorded. Perhaps it's behind your current window. Yes, well, it is your. On <laughs> your uh, you could, if you click on continue, then all right, okay. Oh, all right. I thought uh, good has come true. Okay. Oh, I I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so everything okay. everything good? good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um. So uh. Good. So so we have this um. Um, metric tensor. Um, which is on, on each tangent space, so, so it depends on our coordinates, x0, x1, x2, x3. So we have uh, then um, in, in our tangent, so, so that's, uh, has that, that uh, metric tensor is not Euclidean, but it has a signature of say one plus and three minuses, or if you prefer uh, three pluses, one minus. So we, we uh, refer to, to the positive directions as time-like, only one, one, one plus of that and the others, well, space-like. And uh, very much different from a usual Euclidean metric, we also have here non-zero vectors in, in tangent spaces, uh, which have uh, length zero, uh, with, with respect to this uh, metric, and we will call them uh, light-like. So, so positive, uh, positive um, uh, square of a length or a negative square of a length or zero, zero length. So all of this can happen here. 
Uh, and when we have such a metric tensor, we can also talk about curvature, well, Riemann curvature, um, very much like uh, Gauss, Gaussian curvature on a two-dimensional uh, surface. Uh, so a bit different from the uh, curvature of a curve, which we uh, study in second year, uh, which is more some, some extrinsic curvature. If we change coordinates, we can actually make a curve uh, straight. So the curvature disappears. Uh, that, that kind of curvature depends on how we um, immerse a curve into, into the plane or in, into space. Here we have uh, this, this intrinsic curvature. Uh, which is just a result of the metric tensor. So this is a tensor which has four letters attached to this and some uh, well-known sym symmetries. Uh, but what I'm, I'm talking about is not the uh, Riemann curvature tensor, uh, but I take a trace from, from this uh, by contracting these two uh, uh, in indices, and what I get is the so-called Ricci, Ricci curvature. This is something we can get from the Riemann curvature by contracting. And uh, this is also a, a symmetric tensor, so this is, is going to be symmetric, uh, just like our metric tensor. The metric is, is a, a symmetric tensor with, with two uh, indices and the Ricci curvature is also a symmetric tensor with two in indices. So something we can compare with our original metric um, tensor. Uh, so this um, is only part of the curvature. We, we uh, project, we forget uh, some features of the original curvature. Um, understand only part of the curvature. And this, this Ricci curvature some, somehow measures the diff deformation of volume. It does not uh, measure so much how the shape uh, of our Lorentzian manifold changes, it more measures how the volume changes. And in physics, this um, basically reflects if uh, our space-time is expanding or shrinking or kind of volume preserving. So uh, one interesting case is if this Ricci curvature is zero. In this case, we have a uh, space time which, um, well, is basically volume preserving. Uh, we can, but we can also have uh, this Ricci curvature compared to our curvature tensor being just a multiple of it. And by the Bianchi identity, this, this multiple has to be a constant. We, we cannot put a function here if we have such a relation between Ricci curvature and um, the metric tensor, then this has to be a constant. And uh, this constant has gotten the very um, um, interesting physical name, uh, lambda is a cosmological constant cosmological constant. If this co cosmological constant is zero, we have a Ricci flat uh, space-time. If it is positive, we have an expanding space-time. If it's negative, it is a shrinking space-time. Um, I think the physicists uh, think of our existing real, real existing space-time as something ex expanding, which can be measured. So for physicists, I think the uh, positive cosmological constants are the more interesting case. Um, well, what we do, uh, may, maybe I haven't uh, told yet about who we are. So we, for, for this particular project, it is Masoud um, and uh, our uh, Russian collaborator, Alexeyevsky, who also has been visiting here in Armidale and our um, Italian collaborator, Andrea Spiro. Uh, for some other part of or related project also um, uh, Daniel here is involved, but not in, in, in this particular project I'm, I'm talking about uh, today. So this equation, uh, Ricci uh, curvature is equal um, 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 
uh, to a multiple of the metric tensor, this, this equation is called the uh, Einstein equation. And it goes back to Einstein. And it is a non-linear PDE. It's, it's a, a system of PDEs. This is actually quite a terrible equation. So it's, it's a system of, of non-linear PDE. Um, computing the Ricci curvature is something quite involved. Uh, one has to take second order derivatives of some expressions uh, which uh, involve the metric tensor and its inverse. So uh, not, not very pleasant to, to compute. Um, many compu computations uh, related to what we are doing here have been done in, in very um, a careful work by, by Masood. Yeah, um, can, I, uh, can I just say something? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Einstein equation has, not the Ricci tensor, but the Einstein tensor which is Ricci minus a half times the metric. Um, and so it's when you, which for you doesn't matter so much because it's just changing the definition of lambda. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you want the sitters, which is positive lambda, um, then you need yeah, the Einstein equation equals lambda times G. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah it's, well, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not really doing mathematical physics, but mathematics inspired by physics. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's just, um, it's just what, that's what people refer to as the Einstein equation is the Einstein tensor and not so much the Ricci tensor. But yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. matter. I'm just pointing it out. Yeah, yeah, good, good, thanks. Yeah, yeah, good, good, thanks. So now um, in this, this context uh, of, of a space time with... Um, uh, Lorentzian metric, uh, we can talk about light rays. Uh, light rays, and these are, well, uh, null geodesics. So ve very easy to say what is, is null if we have, uh, well, what's a li light ray? It, it, it is a curve. We have a curve. And uh, each of these, uh, in, at each point of the curve, we have our tangent vector, and uh, we can uh, apply our metric to the tangent vector. And if this metric uh, uh, returns zero, then that's a, a null curve at e each point. So, so tangent tangent uh, vectors have length zero have length zero. So, so this is uh, easy. This is what, what null means. Uh, they are light-like at each point. Uh, well, what is DOG, what is the geodesics? Um, in the Riemannian uh, context, uh, we think of a geodesic as the um, shortest line connecting two points. Here, of course, we cannot uh, really talk about distance because the length of the vector is zero. If we integrate this, we, we get uh, a curve of, of length zero. Uh, but uh, still, we can use other definitions of geodesics. Geodesics can be uh, computed as um, curves which satisfy a second order differential equation. Uh, this differential equation also has a geometric meaning. The geometric meaning is if we, we transport the tangent vector uh, of the curve along the curve, then um, uh, this tangent vector is transported into itself. It is uh, parallel to itself along the curve itself. This is a second order differential equation. And we can also set up a, a, a similar differential equation and, and also get, get solutions which we call geodesics. So not uh, getting too much into uh, the, the technologies, uh, te te um, uh, technicalities, but um, well, uh, it's, it's very sim similar to geodesics, which you, you know from other uh, context. So this, these are light rays and we can have many of them. We can actually have a whole foliation of our space time M uh, foliation into such light rays or into uh, null geodesics. Uh, the physicists would call such a foliation, not fo foliation, but a congruence. Uh, such a congruence into null geodesics can be 
um, produced by a vector field, so say P is a vector field, such that the uh, integral curves along this vector fields form a foliation into null geodesics. Well, obviously this vector field is then a null vector field ev everywhere, so it's light-like light everywhere. And uh, we want that this vector field satisfies an additional condition which we call, or the physicists call, shear freeness. We want this to be shear free, uh, which, um, well, I write down an equation, then I explain what the meaning is. So that curly L is the lead derivative, lead derivative along the vector field P of our metric tensor is our metric tensor scaled by some, uh, what did I, uh, I at first, uh, rho, rho, rho is what I came up with, uh, by, by some constant rho, and uh, this is modulo some error term, uh, which I write as um, uh, two one, for, one form theta uh, multiplied by another one form C. So, so um, uh, I have to explain a, a lot of things regarding this uh, equation. So first of all, what is theta? Theta is, is a very particular form. It is what I, I uh, get when I take the vector field uh, and I uh, apply the metric on this. So the metric uh, applied in one slot on the vector field, leaving the other slot open. Uh, so G applied on the vector field, it gives me a one form. This is a one form, so this is this one form. And uh, uh, Epsi is, is any, any one form, any one form. So if I would not have this term here with the theta and the phi, then this very much would, would look like a conformal scaling of the Lorentzian metric. And on the left hand side, I have the uh, lead derivative of the metric, which is, is basically how the metric changes if I flow along this foliation. I uh, flow along the foliation produced by a vector field um, and differentiate by the um, time parameter along this flow. This is exactly what the lead derivative is. So, so it is how the, vec the um, metric changes, the Lorentzian metric changes as I flow along the vector field. And this change is allowed to be conformal uh, modulo uh, some multiple of that very particular form. So I'm, I'm giving up here control in a certain direction. I want this conformal condition uh, except for, for the, um, um, well, for, 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 for a certain direction. So it is a little bit, by, by that error term, I make uh, this, um, uh, conformal change condition a little bit weaker. It's, it's a weakening of this condition. And uh, while also allowing here that uh, conformal fa factor also makes it weaker. If I would not have this co uh, conformal factor and I would not um, have this uh, error term, then this condition would just mean that uh, uh, the vector field is, is killing uh, with the uh, factor rho here, and uh, if I would not have this error term, it would be conformal killing. So being shear free is a little bit less than conformal killing. It is still a very strong condition, and it, it turns actually out if I have this condition of shear freeness, I could even drop this a priori assumption of, of geodesics because null curves, uh, which uh, uh, are shear free, which produce such a shear free fo foliation uh, or, or uh, automatically have to be geodesics. So, so that's, that's quite an interesting, not trivial fact, but it is, it is true. So now I have my uh, space time. Well, as I said, in principle, we are interested in going up in dimension. You can still think of this as something four dimensional, but uh, in the perspective, we won't go up, we want to go higher. So we have this four-dimensional manifolds and we have this foliation. 
so uh, locally we can um, find some some um, uh, manifold which we call the orbit space so the space of curves we can think of these curves as the points as in some new space of lower dimension of three dimensions so we can uh, project our four-dimensional space-time onto this three-dimensional three-dimensional uh, orbit space which we could think of some three-dimensional surface which is uh, transversal to these lines so uh, lines project onto this uh, three-dimensional manifolds as points well and well interestingly uh, from this four-dimensional uh, space-time with a shear free congruence uh, we get a three-dimensional manifold with some very very special structure namely a CR structure uh, CR uh, means Cauchy Riemann so it is what I have been interested in for a long time coming from complex analysis um, so well what do we have we have the the kernel of this one form theta is um, at, at each point gives us um, um, co-dimension one subspace. So we have uh, here the, the tangent space at each point of M. Then we have the kernel of this. This is four-dimensional at each point. So the kernel of this theta is three-dimensional. So we have a three-dimensional subspace in each uh, tangent space. And in fact, uh, this vector P uh, belongs to this three-dimensional subspace because P was a null vector. We were talking about this. So if I apply G on P and P again, then I get zero. So, so P, uh, the vector field P is in, in that uh, three-dimensional um, um, uh, subspace in this three-dimensional distribution. Um, so also this three-dimensional um, distribution which lives on the manifold M uh, by means of this projection and by, by means of, of this, um, um, this um, uh, um, shearfulness, uh, in, in fact somehow um, projects nicely and leaves a trace on S. So in fact having this, uh, these three-dimensional subspaces in the four-dimensional uh, space, um, four-dimensional subspaces, uh, four-dimensional tangent spaces of, of, of M uh, gives us also here uh, some distinguished distinguished uh, two-dimensional subspaces uh, in uh, TS. So, uh, well, one direction in these three-dimensional subspaces, as I said, is P itself. This is um, our uh, direction of projection. We lose that. So what we still have is these two-dimensional subspaces. Uh, also, uh, what survives under this projection uh, is in fact the restriction of this, this metric here. On the kernel of theta, this term does not really uh, matter. So we, it, it, this, uh, we, we can ignore this because we are now looking at the kernel of theta. So this term disappears. Uh, so we have actually what survives uh, is a um, conformal class of metrics. So if we, we travel along these lines here, of course the metric can change, but only in a conformal way. So what survives on these two dimensional subspaces is a conformal metric. So um, while conformal metric uh, in two dimensional space uh, can ring some bells, it, it sounds like complex analysis, and indeed, uh, if we have such a class of conformal metrics on this two-dimensional subspaces, we know what uh, rotating by 90 degrees is. Angle, uh, um, conformal 
um, class of metrics tells us what angles are, does not tell us what length is, but we know what multiplication by i is and multi multiplication by, well, or, uh, uh, rotation by 90 degrees, we call this multiplication by i and this gives us here uh, also a complex structure. So, um, um, com um, so we, we, we know on this, we, we have on, on TS, on, on TS, we have a, a two dimensional, we call a distribution, two dimensional uh, subspaces in, in each, each of them. We, we know what, what is a 90 degree uh, rotation. We just have to fix here some orientation if we go, uh, what, what is clockwise, what's counterclockwise. We have to fix one. Uh, doesn't matter which one, 90 uh, degrees rotation uh, from the conformal metric and we, we call this multiplication by i. Multiplication by, by i and this means uh, we have here a complex structure on, these, on this distrib uh, distribution. This is exactly what a CR structure is. So now we, we can actually try and go the other way around. If we, if, if we know we have um, M, uh, we, we, which is, uh, well, a space time uh, and uh, shear free congruence, shear free congruence, uh, more precisely shear free congruence of null geodesics. And uh, we, we, we get down here to some, some S uh, which is a CXCR manifold. Then we could also try and start with a CR manifold and construct a manifold uh, as uh, a fiber bundle, as a as, uh, um, line bundle, or maybe as a, a, a circle bundle uh, over this three dimensional. CR manifold. So now uh, when we think of such a CR manifold, how can we uh, fix the structure on such a CR manifold? Uh, let us follow what um, Eli Katan uh, did a long time ago, almost a hundred years, uh, well probably a hundred years ago. A um, hundred years ago you can, uh, on, on your three-dimensional manifold, you fix two forms. One form you call uh, theta and uh, the kernel of this theta gives actually your distribution. This is the, the, two, the um, uh, rank two distribution as, as above. So we can give that by some, by some uh, one form. And if we uh, scale this one form by a um, real valued function, we still get this same distribution. So we have to have in mind when we give this distribution as the um, annihilator of a form, then this form, uh, this one form is not uniquely determined. Uh, we can always scale it. But still it's a good, uh, good idea to to use such a form. And we have, this is a, a, a real, real one form. And uh, also we use another one form, mu, which is, uh, which is uh, also uh, a one form, but a complex one form. And uh, if we, if we restrict this, this one form, we can restrict this one form uh, on the kernel of theta, then this um, maps, well, this, this kernel of theta, which is, is two-dimensional, real two-dimensional at each point, uh, into C. And in this way, it, it introduces a complex coordinate on each uh, of, of these, subspace, these two dimensional subspaces, we, we have a complex coordinate by, by means of this two form. So again, for, for this two form, it does not matter what happens outside of theta, of, of the kernel of theta. So we can actually um, um, add a multiple uh, of, of theta 
plus a multiple of theta, and nothing will change because we don't care what this form does on the kernel of theta. So we can uh, add here a multiple of theta, and we can also scale this. We can here um, multiply this by a complex scale, uh, multiplied by a complex number. And uh, again, the complex structure will not change. So we have to have in mind that this, this uh, one form mu is only determined uh, up to a complex scale and uh, up to adding a multiple of this form theta, which vanishes on, our, on, on the um, distribution we are interested in. Uh, so now having these two forms, we can in fact uh, construct a space-time. So we can construct a space-time um, M by just taking S and adding as a trivial fiber a copy of R, so the, the Cartesian product. And uh, on this manifold, we can introduce the following metric. Uh, we use this complex one form mu and multiply it by its conjugate. Uh, this gives us um, semi-positive definite metric already. We, we can lift that up to, to that manifold. Of course, uh, in this fiber direction R, it does not give us um, any um, a, a, anything. So, so these fiber directions with respect to this semi-definite metric will be zero. Uh, but we add something here, namely we add our form theta and we multiply it by some um, uh, horizontal connection form on this on, on this uh, fiber bundle, namely some, uh, some one form which has dt in it. So, so t is the uh, a parameter in this fiber. And you can think of t as time if you wish. So it has dt in it uh, plus something else. So, so this will be a, a connection form. Connection form. Uh, on this this product on this on 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 m so this is is g and also if we want we can uh, multiply this we can scale this uh, by some uh, positive uh, conformal factor so it turns out that any metric of this this uh, kind uh, actually will be will have a shear free congruence and uh, the um, Shear-free congruence is actually this fiber bundle here. So our shear-free vector field is just the uh, vertical vector field. So these vertical fibers give us our shear-free congruence. And in, in fact, on the other hand, um, any uh, shear-free metric uh, with um, shear-free vector field P uh, will be of this form. So that's, that's a pretty general form of metrics we are going to uh, to uh, study uh, starting from, well, basically any uh, CR manifold. We start with a CR manifold, here a three-dimensional CR manifold. We can also go up in dimensions and uh, get this, this kind of um, uh, shear-free um, uh, foliation. We have not talked at all about uh, how much this metric might be uh, Einstein or Ritchie flat or or anything like this. So that's that's our uh, next um, aim. Uh, so the, now, excuse me, good. Um, yeah. Is your p d by d t there or d by d r? Uh, d d t. Yeah, yeah. Thank thank you. Previously we used r. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's just getting confused when people change their notation. So previously, uh, following Norovsky, we used R, and then at some stage we, we changed it. <laughs> so m maybe I will will do that more often, uh, mixing up R and T. So <laughs> thank you for for telling me. So now um, among CR manifolds. So we, we, we want to start with the CR manifolds. There are CR manifolds which are particularly nice. So particular, particularly 
uh, nice CR manifolds are the so-called Sasakian manifolds. Uh, Sasakian manifolds. Uh, so Sasakian manifolds uh, are CR manifolds which have an additional structure. So if if S is now uh, my uh, uh, CR manifold, and uh, S is actually already used to hint at Sasakian, um, then we, we again have, have another foliation into, well, in the ideal case, into circles or into uh, lines. So locally, uh, uh, one uh, uh, foliation in, in, uh, in, in, into curves. And these curves are also generated as flows of, 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 of some vector field. So Z is, is a vector field uh, which produces produces some uh, foliation, produces uh, some uh, foliation into curves. And again, we, we could think of uh, an orbit uh, manifold, which is now uh, two-dimensional. So K, some manifold K, um, in, in which the curves become points. Well, everything is, is local. And this vector field Z, I want to be quite special. So this is my vector field Z, uh, which I want um, to be um, normed in such a way that if I plug this into that form theta, which, well, you remember theta was what I get from the metric. If I plug in the vector field P as one argument, so it's, it's one form, uh, that one form also survives somehow on projecting down on the CR manifold. And on this CR manifold, I have a vector field. If I, I plug that in, I want to get one. This is just a matter of rescaling the vector field to get that one. Um, so, well, I can always rescale it so that it gets one if the vector field is um, um, a transversal to, to that distribution. But I want also another um, um, property if I uh, take the exterior derivative of this one form, I get a two form. And in this two form into one argument, I can also plug in this vector field Z and I want that I get zero. Um, a vector field with such properties is called a rib vector field. Rib vector field uh, for uh, the um, form theta. Any, any such form theta has such a rib vector field. So there is such a rib vector field. And I want that this foliation is a foliation of a rib vector field. And I want even more. Uh, I actually, what I want is uh, that if, if I travel along these, this foliation, so as thinking of this as a flow, flow of, of the vector field Z, then I can travel along this, this vector field, uh, then I want uh, that uh, the Lie derivative along this vector field of my multiplication by, by I, I call this J as, uh, uh, real endomorphism as an, an endomorphism multiplication by uh, by i on that two dimensional space as uh, real endomorphism. Well, think of uh, uh, rotation by ninety degrees. So if if I um, 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 uh, I trace what happens with uh, multiplication by ninety degrees as I travel along these fibers then I actually want that, that nothing happens. So I want that this is zero. So that, that um, the multiplication by, by 90 degrees uh, while traveling along these fibers uh, always stays um, li like um, multiplication by 90 degrees. So this is a very strong condition. Having such a vector field Z is a very strong condition. And it turns out when I uh, look at this, this orbit space of 
this this foliation space, then this also gets a very uh, nice geometric structure, namely a Kähler structure. So K, a K becomes a Kähler manifold. So, and again, when I, I think of such a Sasakian manifold, it is always determined by some underlying Kähler manifold. One can think, um, one can think of uh, Sasakian manifolds actually as odd di dimensional analogs of Kähler manifolds. Kähler manifolds are always uh, even dimensional. Uh, are always uh, even dimensional uh, manifolds. Uh, always complex manifold. So what's a Kähler manifold? It's it's a complex manifold. In in our case, um, just a one dimensional, one dimensional complex manifold. So a Riemann surface a complex uh, manifold with some additional structure, and that additional structure uh, can be easiest to describe by saying we we have a metric which is produced, uh, well, a, a Hermitian metric. So what is a, is a Hermitian metric? We have at each tangent space, which is now um, a complex space. So tangent space are complex spaces. Uh, in each complex space, uh, I, I have actually um, a Hermitian form. So what is, is a Hermitian form? Um, Hermitian form is, is actually a, a, a Riemannian uh, or e Euclidean uh, inner product. So G is an inner product. It's the real part, but there is also something, uh, something um, imaginary plus E times some, something. So ma making this uh, her Hermitian matrix. Uh, uh, well, you, you could also say, I, I don't care what this something here is, uh, but I have this um, metric G, uh, Riemannian metric G, which should be um, uh, compatible with our complex structure. So if I uh, plug in a, a real tangent vector C and the real tangent vector eta, and I apply my uh, multiplication by 90 degrees, uh, rotation by 90 degrees uh, on both vectors, then, then nothing changes. So that, that is also a way of, of seeing that. So we, we have such, um, such a Hermitian me metric. And for a Kähler manifold, this Hermitian metric is produced in a very uh, simple and nice way, namely through a potential. We have a function f, uh, which is on our Kähler manifold. And uh, we want to produce that Hermitian metric on the tangent space just by, by looking at the complex Hessian. So dz, this all works also in higher dimensions. So say z uh, j dz bar k, this uh, complex uh, um, 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 Hessian uh, gives us uh, an Hermitian matrix, Hermitian uh, form uh, on the tangent spaces. And uh, if this, this metric, if it is positive definite, if, if uh, we have a metric which is produced in this way, uh, it is a Kähler metric. Also the other way around, if we have a Kähler metric, we always can find such a function which is called the potential. Um, this potential is not uniquely determined by the metric. We could add uh, some harmonic terms to F, which would disappear when we differentiate by anti-holomorphic um, Z or by holomorphic Z. So uh, the, uh, there's as many potentials for the same Kähler manifold. Uh, but everything on the Kähler manifold can, can actually be studied by looking at this potential. This potential is very important. So let me, uh, let me give you some examples. Not, not sure how I'm going in, in time. So Good. Good. Yep. just yep. before you go to the examples, I, I have a just a general question about what you've said so far. Um, so you're starting with a Sasakian manifold S. Yes. And um, you're postulating the existence of a surface that you're calling K. 
which admits a, a natural Kähler structure. Yes. Um, is that surface S canonically defined with, res with respect to the theta and the Z that you've initiated here? Um, is, this a, is this purely locally defined? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Ev everything is, is local. So S is a CR manifold. Um, on this manifold, uh, well, I, I can fix uh, a theta. I, well, I, it's a CR manifold with a th fixed theta. And then I, uh, uh, well, with, that, with respect to this theta, we have this uniquely determined rate vector field. But I also postulate that this uh, rate vector field is, is particularly nice in the way that it also preserves uh, the, the complex structure. Yeah. So, so this is, uh, everything is local. And then I claim in, in this situation, uh, locally, uh, this, this um, uh, fo foliation into curves has an orbit space which has uh, a, a Kähler structure. Everything is, is local. Okay, so this is, this is just defined locally and, and um, if you take a different locality inside S, you may have a different Kähler form defined in this way. So, so there's no globally defined object which which we can say is a Kähler surface. It's it's something that's purely dependent on the the local coordinate chart inside S. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but, but it is as a geometric object. It it is uh, well well defined uh, on on the that orbit space. So if we we think of this uh, on the space um, of lines, so to so to speak, uh, we we can introduce locally. Uh, a well-defined Kähler structure, so say by by that mm -hmm. p potential. So, well, what what we basically will will do is uh, we um, straighten this. We, we make this this uh, this this straight as as a, um, a Cartesian product. Yes. I mean, this this in in the terminology of sasakian structures what what you're setting up here is is really strictly speaking a regular sasakian structure isn't it so you're saying that every sasakian structure locally is regular um well um uh, but by going local i actually avoid this regular uh, regularity so my understanding is the the difference between local uh, with with regular and non regular well um uh, regular structures um, uh, re require some nice behavior of this this foliation. I think that that's that's the difference. That that would make it regular to have have a global global nice uh, foliation here. Y yes, I mean yeah, yeah. locally, a, a foliation is a fibration. That's yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's an intrinsic property of any foliation. So yeah, 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 yeah if yeah. you regard it locally as a fibration, then I guess you can. Um, by by assumption, you can you can define this surface K locally with yeah, yeah. give it a Kähler structure. If if I would have a, a global structure of either a circle bundle or a line bundle, I think then then people sometimes uh, call the the underlying Kähler man manifold uh, quantizable. Uh, so it's, it's 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 different terminology, mostly inspired by physics. But here ev everything is, is is just really really. Um, uh, uh, local. Okay. So, uh, but my, my examples may be still global. So examples uh, say just on 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 C as a Kähler manifold, uh, then I can have um, um, the most simple uh, function which produces uh, as a complex Hessian Hermitian form. Um, f equals absolute value z squared, or in we could also go in in C n and say f equals z one squared plus and so on z n squared, something like like this. Well, obviously, if we take here for this uh, function uh, the uh, complex Hessian, uh, we we get um, yeah, here the the identical matrix, which is a nice Hermitian matrix. So this is uh, the sim simplest um, um, example. Uh, another example 
uh, let me uh, take f equals the natural log of one plus z squared. Um, or we could, could also here have log of um, one plus z one squared plus and so on z n uh, squared, um, something like that. Um, this is actually in a local chart, people may, may recognize it, in, in a local chart is something what in fact uh, lives on CPN and it is uh, the potential of something which is called the Fubini Studi metric. Um, which gives, um, um, well, Adam's very familiar with that. Um, uh, for, for n equals one, uh, it's the Fubini Studi metric on CP, CP1, which is a sphere, which is a two sphere, and um, producing the corresponding uh, Sasaki manifold uh, will be an S3 which lives as a hop hop vibration over S2. Uh, so um, uh, that's our second example. And the third example looks very similar. Uh, so let F be minus the natural log of one minus Z squared. Uh, obviously this gives only a positive definite metric if or well, any metric that uh, Z um, um, absolute value must be smaller than one. So, so this is something which lives on the, on the um, unit disk. And uh, it is actually the potential of the Lobachevsky metric. So all of these three metrics um, are homogeneous, uh, ho uh, give, give us homogeneous um, uh, Kähler manifolds and over these, these manifolds, uh, we can produce the Sasaki manifolds. And, and that's actually quite easy how we get the Sasaki manifolds if we have the, um, uh, if, if we have the potential. Um, Sasaki manifolds uh, can be produced as um, embedded manifolds. Uh, by, by the way, it is a, a very difficult problem uh, to realize abstractly given CR manifolds as sub um, manifolds as, as surfaces in um, complex space. But uh, Sasaki manifolds automatically are um, embeddable in the following way. Uh, we have our uh, Kähler manifold. Uh, we can, um, so we, which is, is say in, in CN with um, uh, potential F. Uh, then we can look into CN plus one going, going one dimension up and uh, considering there the a uh, real hypersurface. So here we have say Z, Z1, Zn and W as the extra variable. So the imaginary part of this extra variable, extra complex variable W is just uh, F of Z. So this is a, a hypersurface in um, n plus one complex dimensional space. So this is actually two n plus one dimensional. It gives us um, a CR manifold, actually a Sasaki manifold. And uh, the uh, rib vector field here is that just uh, d by d uh, u if, uh, well, u, u is the real part of w. You see the real part of w does not occur at all in this, in this equation. So uh, this uh, hypersurface uh, in a way gives us a cylinder uh, with a generator uh, U direction. Uh, th this is our D by DU is our ray vector field. And well, V is our imaginary part of, of W. So if we, know, if we know the potential, then we know this Sasaki manifold. Just, we can just write down the 
uh, the um, equation. Uh, so now, uh, after having that, uh, how do we go up? Not, not so much time left, so, um, yeah. Well, do you give me 10, 10 more minutes? Then maybe I actually will get to, to something. Uh, so now we, we have our Kähler manifold, uh, Kähler manifold K with potential F. Then we have our Sasaki manifold uh, S, uh, which is say V equals F of Z. And then we want uh, our uh, Lorentzian manifold. Good, good. I'm sorry. Um, just with your the the last example that you were talking about there so yeah. this is in euclidean space you've defined a hypersurface in this way which is a a cr hypersurface inside complex euclidean space you've defined the rev vector field what is the k here um k, k is, is just c cn or or a coordinate chart of of cn uh, where we produce a metric by by that potential so everything is is, is low well the, these examples are in, in fact global here, here here globally this is just c or cn is is the Kähler manifold and and the metric is is what what we get when we when we form uh, the uh, complex hessian of of the potential so you're saying that the cr hypersurface is is uh, fibered by the the flow of the vector field d by d u. Yes, yeah, in in a in a in a trivial way because uh, u does not appear. We we have here just uh, the the uh, lines z is a constant and v is a constant. Then u is arbitrary and u gives us this vibration here. So d, d by d u is the the rep vector field. Here in, in this 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 case, um, yeah. Well, well, in the first and third example, it is quite quite easy. In the second example, it is more subtle uh, because we are looking only on one chart, and uh, this this uh, um, um, Kähler structure on on uh, one chart. Uh, actually can can be extended in a very natural way to, to C, CPN or CP1 um, and, and then gives a nicer picture. But if you are looking at this locally just on one, one chart, well, then we can also here, here stay in, in, in CN rather than CPN or in, in C rather than uh, but if, CPN. If N, is, if N is greater than one, what's the, what's the S in that second example? Is it, are you just taking CPN cross the real line to get your S? Um, well, in this case... Um, For N equals one, it's clear because you've got the hop vibration. So that's yeah, 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 yeah. CP1. But for N equal to two, for example, what, how do we get S from, from CP2? Uh, um, well, in, instead of S2, of course, we have um, um, C CPN. Yes, so if CPN is, if CP2 is, is the Kähler surface, Kähler manifold, what, how do we get the Sasakian manifold, the, the one you're calling S originally? Uh, well, um, uh, you, you can always, when, when you have a Kähler manifold, you, you can uh, always, uh, well, m m maybe I'm not, not sure about um, a global construction. I mean, locally, you, you always uh, get it in, in this way. Uh, how it works globally, I'm, I'm not, not really sure about that. Okay. So if, if there, there uh, is, 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 is a nice, uh, well, I, I So your think, last example think, think with yes. the CR hypersurface is really, is really what you have in mind when you think about projective space as your Kähler manifold. You're, you're yeah, really yes. thinking locally in terms of that CR hypersurface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so also here I, I work um, locally. I, I assume I have a Kähler manifold. I assume I have some Sasaki manifold uh, over that. Uh, everything can be local, 
also the fi fibers can be local. And Lorenzen, um, uh, manifold on that. Um, M and now, uh, well, our metric is something like this. I have my, my Kähler metric uh, on, uh, so you, you remember what, what we started with. So um, this, this part here is, is in fact a Kähler metric on C. So, so think, think of, of mu as, as um, uh, complex, um, uh, complex coordinate. So the uh, exterior uh, differential of, of a complex coordinate. So, so we have here a kind of a Kähler metric which is scaled and we add some, some, something which produces the Lorentzian signature. Uh, so here we do something similar. We, we start with the Kähler metric. We would be allowed to rescale it by a positive uh, real scalar. Uh, then we add, we, we know our, um, our um, theta and uh, we want to multiply here by some um, uh, horizontal uh, um, connection form plus something li like this. So uh, now um, We had in mind some well-known examples from, for, from physics, uh, which are the uh, well-known uh, known Tobnat, uh, Kerr, and Schwarzschild, um, Schwarzschild uh, metrics. So in, in this case, um, uh, theta can be uh, written in the following. It, it all comes from in, in all of these metrics uh, in fact, come from this construction uh, of a Sasaki. The um, uh, underlying CR manifolds is of Sasaki type, so there is a Kähler structure behind. And the theta in this case, um, of, of these uh, three very famous metrics, uh, space times, has the following form. It is some, some d, du, the um, uh, u is the variable in our um, uh, Sasaki foliation, so D, D U uh, plus uh, D C F. So D C is is not the well. Uh, D F is obviously D F by D Z times D Z plus D F by D Z bar D by D Z. So by D C we mean uh, D F by D Z D Z bar times I minus I d f by d z bar d z bar. So maybe with a minus sign, not, not sure about plus and minus here, but it doesn't really matter. So, so uh, this uh, theta, if we know our Kähler manifold and we know our Kähler potential, we can actually produce theta. And this works for all of these three metrics. Uh, they involve uh, a, a couple of parameters, a, b, uh, positive real numbers and M, which is a mess. And uh, depending on what A, B, A and B are, uh, it depends uh, what, uh, if we get Tobnat or Kerr or Schwarzschild. Uh, Tobnat is, I think, if, if um, A is zero, um, uh, Kerr is if B is zero, Schwarzschild is if, if A and B are, are both zero. So Schwarzschild is actually a, a, a kind of a, a trivial case here. Uh, not the most interesting case. Um, uh, but by the way, top nut is related uh, to this, uh, well, to, 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 to this metric, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Masoud, can you confirm? It's, it's this yes, metric. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. To, top, nut, to, top nut is, is related to this metric. Um, uh, Schwarzschild is related to a, a very trivial. Um, not interesting CR manifold, and uh, Kea is is um, is is related to some um, Sasaki manifold, which is um, uh, not not homogeneous. So I think uh, um, uh, one divided by one plus z squared. Yeah, yes. one divided by one plus z squared is then the the uh, potential. So we can write out these potentials, and we have not seen these potentials on on these this. this um, 
uh, relation to Kehler manifolds and to Sasaki manifolds, we have not been ref uh, seen referred to in the literature. So, so that is, is, uh, is um, an observation which may other people have made before us, but they didn't tell us. <laughs> so um, we had to find that out ourselves. So we, we, we know this, this metric, we know from uh, the uh, Kehler metric, um, this is some um, a conformal factor which we can control, we can use to make um, our metrics nice. So this is something we can, we can play with. Then theta is, is given by, by, by that, uh, that uh, uh, formula. And uh, this uh, connection form is also something we can play with. So, so this P and this form is, is what we can play with. In, in order to satisfy Einstein equation or something, something like this we can play with. And in the, the famous Taubnat, uh, Kerr and Schwarzschild uh, metrics, they are actually richly flat. And the point is that one can choose P and this form in such a way that uh, it becomes richly flat. So, so that's, that's richly flat. Uh, now, uh, in the Taubnat case, uh, this, well, call this, how do we call this, maybe phi. Uh, this phi has a, a particular simple form. It is actually dr, uh, dt, we, we said t now, yeah, dt, uh, plus uh, a multiple of this, this uh, form theta. So we, we take just the uh, um, uh, exterior differential of our uh, vertical fiber function dt and we add some multiple of a form which already have. So this is what works in the top nut case. Um, and also in the in the Schwarzschild case, in the um, uh, care, care case it is a little bit more more complicated. Um, so, in uh, I, I could show you the formulae, but the formula are, are rather scary. So, so maybe there's, there's no particular um, case. So, to, uh, not no particular um, uh, point of, of showing that. But but the point is that one can find uh, this form and this uh, um, fa factor to to make this. Richie flat. So now, uh, what what we did this this was was pretty much all known before we started. Maybe uh, we uh, re uh, we reinterp in reinterpreted some things, uh, but that's it's n n it's it's not really new. So what what we we did so so our our part our part is the following, uh, going in higher dimension. So, so starting with a Kähler manifold, Kähler manifold um, a K, and we don't want it just Kähler, so we have our, our Kähler potential, but we want that this Kähler manifold as a Riemannian manifold is, um, is um, Einstein. So, so we start with a Kähler-Einstein manifold. Uh, so all of these um, uh, um, all, all of these uh, examples are actually related to Kähler Einstein manifold. So we, we start with the Kähler Einstein manifold, which means if we take the Ricci curvature, actually, all of them are Ricci flat. Actually, uh, they are Ricci flat. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the, these are Ricci flat. We, these are Ricci flat. So of course it would be better not to have just Ricci flat, but some way of controlling the uh, cosmological constant. So here we want we start with something uh, which um, um, the the Ricci curvature of of this Kähler metric is some uh, cosmological constant which we uh, call lambda naught is uh, uh, well of of our G, uh, not not M K the Kähler. So th this is what we start with, and then we we are wondering: Can we starting from from that 
um, construct a Sasaki manifold and construct a, a Lorentzian manifold already of higher dimension. So this is, is um, say dimension 2n. Here we would have 2n plus 1. Here we would have 2n plus 2. Uh, so some Lorentzian uh, manifold uh, which has um, uh, which has um, uh, shear free shear free congruence on it congruence and a metric uh, G which is, is is Einstein and hopefully with a cosmological constant which we can uh, control and it, it turns out that this is possible. Um, the first step, of course, is to, well, we, we uh, use an ansatz that we have G, which is, well, something, we, this is known. The, the Kähler metric is, is known from, from, from here. Uh, well, this is unknown. Uh, this is again known, and uh, uh, this is, 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 is unknown. So we, we can uh, put this here as SDR yeah, plus a function H. So, so uh, uh, we have now two functions we can play with. We have, have this function H and we have this function P. We can, we, uh, two functions we can play with. So the first step is, is, is try and, and compute the Ricci for, for, such, for such a metric, uh, compute the, the Ricci of, of G. Uh, this is, as I said before, is, is quite um, involved computation. Sometimes you can use um, uh, uh, computer algebra. Um, most, mostly you would uh, try computer algebra and then doing by hand or first doing by hand and then confirm everything you did by computer algebra and going back and forth this way and making sure at the end that your uh, manual computations and your computer computations and, and maybe the manual computations of your colleague uh, coincide. So, so this is um, um, an unpleasant computation. Computation, then we, we put a cosmological constant, which may be different from the cosmological constant of our Kähler-Einstein metric. And we put that here. And this gives us a system of nonlinear PDE. Nonlinear PDE. So not much hope of, of being able to, to, solve, uh, to solve that. And one, one could think, or, or naively, one could think uh, that um, this uh, matrix equation splits somehow into blocks and the Kähler block stays the Kähler block and the non-Kähler part, these uh, um, vertical parts stay vertical parts. This is not true. Actually, everything um, uh, mixes, mixes all together. So it is, 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 is not nice, not, not nice at all. Uh, but on, um, on uh, analyzing this, it, it turned out uh, that um, uh, most of the equations is, is, is basically, uh, well, it is an, an n uh, plus uh, 2 times n plus 2 matrix or something like this, or e even 2n plus 2, yeah, 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 2 matrix. Um, uh, so it is um, two n plus two squared PDEs which we get, but then it turns out most of them were completely redundant, and uh, also it turned out uh, that actually there were not so much uh, PDEs. They they could be reduced to ODEs, uh, ODEs on that time parameter t. So it is ODEs on t. And there are, um, well, nonlinear, nonlinear non ODEs. And I think it was uh, three of them, three ODEs. Uh, one ODE uh, on that conformal factor, one ODE on that, and uh, two ODEs on, on that H. 
so that is uh, one well one um, one ODE uh, on uh, well p squared, and this is a second order second order nonlinear. So I'm al almost done, <laughs> and uh, we have two ODEs uh, on uh, this function h, and one of this is second order and one of them is first order. And then it turned out, it, it was, it's, it's not obvious at all, but by, by um, uh, uh, sharply looking at it and making very brave conjectures, uh, we, we, we guessed and we could, could prove that, that the second order ODE here is a consequence of the first order ODE, so, so that's gone. So we have a second order ODE and we have a first order ODE. So very nice. So now that second order ODE, no matter how scary that looked uh, at the beginning, has a very simple solution. Uh, namely, uh, it is, uh, well, what is it? Uh, T, T squared, it's, it's um, a second order polynomial. Um, So, so what, what is it? Is I think uh, it is t squared divided by 4c plus c, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Is it like, like well, a, a, actually, it is any polynomial uh, of second order which has a discriminant of minus one quarter or is it 60 or, or something like this, with, with, with a given discriminant. So, so that ODE actually gives us the discriminant of, uh, uh, of, um, uh, of a second order polynomial. It's, it's obvious it's not linear. We cannot scale this because that would change the discriminant. So we, we cannot scale that. So, so this is basically one, one parameter involved for, for that. And um, this, um, function uh, actually remains the theme also for solving the second equation. So we can solve the second equation. And uh, well, by the way, all these equations do not depend on with what um, 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 the Kähler metric we started with. We changed the Kähler metric, we still get the same ODE. So it, it does not depend on what we actually started with. Uh, so um, this is where we get our, uh, m maybe I'm not exactly uh, right, right here with the uh, details of the formula and it doesn't really matter. So it is something like, like this. So, so one parameter involved here. And uh, well, then this H is something like that. And this is actually very new. Um, um, uh, that this, this uh, function uh, form uh, uh, this function um, uh, simplifies actually quite significantly. Uh, it's, it's also a, a polynomial, uh, well, not a polynomial, a rational function, because we have to divide here by this p squared. And then we have here also t multiplied by t squared 16c squared, something like this, to some power, power n, and uh, well, um, a, a, a pretty nice function actually. And this um, needs to multiply it by an integral, uh, well, roughly speaking, an integral of a polynomial. So I, I just write this out, uh, t squared plus 16 c squared uh, to the power n. And then we have here an expression uh, which uh, involves uh, the um, cosmological constant which we want to achieve. So we can control the cosmological constant. Then we also have, we have here 16 um, C squared plus T squared uh, minus 16 um, C times the cosmological constant of the Kähler metric. So this is given here. And this needs to be divided by uh, four T squared. So um, um, it could happen that the polynomial in the numerator, this is a polynomial, that this does not have any constant term. This happens if, um, 
well, if what? If uh, lambda times 16c squared minus 16c lambda naught is zero, uh, this happens if uh, lambda equals c times lambda naught. So in, in this case, C, C has to be positive, so this is only, positive, uh, only possible if the cosmological constant lambda naught and lambda have the same sign. So, so in this case, we don't have a constant term in the numerator, and we can just divide through, and all what we integrate here is just a polynomial. And this polynomial is then multiplied with that rational function in front of it, simple rational function. Uh, but also, if uh, we have a constant term here, uh, we would integrate uh, one divide or this constant divided by four t squared, which gives us um, t in the denominator, uh, which would then nicely cancel with that one. So, so in any case, we get something um, uh, something rational, which can be completely, explicitly, completely computed. So uh, th this was amazing, starting with a nonlinear uh, system of um, PDEs. Uh, we, we actually came up with um, uh, completely explicit solutions. So I, I think this is where I should stop. Uh, was was almost, well, uh, Moscow size um, seminar lengths. <laughs> so I, I hope, um, I, I didn't tire you too much. Uh, any, any questions? Good. Can I just get in and ask quickly? Um, so if, if I've understood the overall sort of aim here, you, your K again, I, I keep coming back to this K, yes. K. This is topological, topologically trivial, isn't it? it you, it's essentially, you could take it to be a ball in, in CN topologically. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, uh, but you, then you choose a, a strongly plurisubharmonic function on that domain. Yes. Which is going is the potential for some Kähler Einstein metric. Yes. So the you're, are you saying then that if if so first of all are there any restrictions on the pluri the strongly plurisubharmonic function in order for it to be to, to be the potential of a Kähler-Einstein metric? Uh, locally not. Locally, that's all we need. Yeah. Um, what comes out of this globally is a different question. If, if that could be um, put into some nice uh, global manifold with a nice global uh, vibration, that, that's a different matter. But, but so far, your, your results and your findings are all entirely local, aren't they? It's entirely local, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but your, um, once again, your, the, the, the strongly plurisubharmonic function that you start with is arbitrary, is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah, completely and, arbitrary. And then you find that you can construct this um, Lorentzian metric on the four-dimensional space that uh, comes out of this ultimately in such a way that you get a positive cosmological constant. Is that the... Is that uh, the... Actually, any, any cosmological constant is fine. Uh, the, 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 only, uh, the only connection between the Kähler cosmological constant and the final cosmological constant is that they need to be related by a, a positive a multiple if we want that constant term to, to disappear here. But uh, on, on a second uh, thought, there is no particular reason for not having the, the constant term here. So it's, it's, it's nothing wrong with the constant. We still can integrate it. it it's still the T in the denominator will cancel with the T we, we would have here. Just, just coming back to the two simplest examples that you started with though. So you're, you're saying that for the, is it for the Schwarzschild Example: the the original yeah. Kähler potential is just the norm squared, mod z squared. Is uh, that... Even even worse, I'm not sure. It's not written. It's, it's not even with the Kähler potential. If we if we look at the CR manifold, which actually is not a Sasaki manifold. Yeah, I should correct this. For for the Schwarzschild, the CR manifold is not a Sasaki manifold. It is 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 just v equals zero. It is just. Uh, um, um, 
uh, well, um, um, a real hyperplane. So it is, is, is just a, a real hyperplane. And are you, are you, it, it is your, is your plurisubharmonic function just the norm squared? Uh, well, even worse, the, well, the plurisubharmonic function is zero. So we, we okay. Is, um, is, in, in, is it the Kerr example then where your plurisubharmonic function is the potential of the Fubini Sturdy metric? Uh, no, that is top knot. Top knot, okay. So top, top knot gives us um, um, the uh, Fubini Studi and Kerr, uh, yeah. Kerr has, uh, Kerr has um, uh, I think one uh, divided by one plus n squared, something like this. So. Okay, so that's that's what you're calling the um, Lobachevsky potential. Um, that's a no, no, it's positive, isn't it? So it's the spherical. Yeah, yeah, Lobachevsky is actually well. This this is uh, well with the plus. It is uh, top knot, and Lobachevsky changes here. Yeah. And then we have to put the minus front uh, to, to to make it. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think uh, who is there? Wilson and um, Robinson. Uh, uh, have been looking at this by well without referring to the potential but but basically looking at uh, what they called uh, a generalized top knot where they put a k here some some constant k here and i think they divide by k here and this k could also be uh, negative it could be positive so if that is is equal to zero we get uh, Schwarzschild for k equals zero. For k positive, we get the classical top knot. And for k uh, negative, we get some um, uh, something um, related to the Lobachevsky metric, which at, at some stage we, we thought we had invented, but then we, we found that uh, people knew that before. Now you've said that all these basic examples are Ricci flat, right? That uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the top knot, Kea and uh, Schwarzschild, they are Ricci flat. Um, uh, but we, we can actually our, our method also works, of course, in, in that sense, uh, actually in the in the uh, the choice of the uh, connection form is actually um, inspired by top knot. So all, all our we call our solutions top knot type solutions, uh, and. Um, uh, also, in this classical top knot uh, solution, with our approach, we could control the um, cosmological constant. Okay, so so just to make sure I'm following something here, the in those basic examples that are Ricci flat, the C in your equation would be zero. Is that right? Um, uh, can you repeat it? I. So, so where you're saying that the cos the overall cosmological constant is a is a constant multiple of the um, the Kähler Einstein constant, uh, and you're saying that these basic examples are all Ricci flat. In those cases, are you saying therefore that the constant multiple of the Kähler Einstein constant is zero? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, here they do not. Uh, in, in in fact, uh, c lambda c and lambda zero uh, can can be pretty arbitrary. Uh, this this relation only came from the maybe not so smart desire to get rid of the uh, constant term in this numerator function here. So, so a, 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 actually, th this is some some condition which, in general, we we, we don't have to impose. It it just would allow us to um, to divide through here to to get rid of this denominator. But there is, is no particular need for doing that. But you would you would find in any case that if you went through this construction. In the special cases of the of the classical Taub knot or the Kerr or even yeah. the Schwarzschild, that your your lambda would come out to be zero from this calculation. So your yes. uh, 
So H and theta would have, would have a simplified form in all of those cases. Yeah, which de depend on our, our choice of lambda. So we, we, can, we can choose lambda and then this gives us H and this gives, uh, well, uh, um, and uh, well, th theta is uh, this tau not ansatz. So we, we start already with an ansatz for, for theta, which we, we can, could call the top not ansatz, which, which uh, just comes from the potential. So we have that. Uh, all what we play with is the conformal factor and it is this, this H in the second form, in that connection form. And uh, for any choice of, uh, well, given lambda naught and uh, any choice of desired lambda and actually any choice of a positive constant C, um, we, we get uh, an, an H uh, which realizes then the desired cosmological constant. But, but if, sorry, perhaps I'm, I'm missing something here, but if you know that your, your original metric is going to be Ricci flat, doesn't that force lambda to be zero? Uh, yeah, yeah, if we want Ricci flat, we, we have lambda equals zero, yes. In, in classical top knot and uh, K metrics, lambda and lambda naught are, are zero. Okay. Both are zero. So our, our results are stronger. So saying, all right, we start with uh, a Kähler Einstein with lambda node and we get a Lorentzian with lambda. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So good. But it yes. is completely local. In, well, some, some chat, lambda is indeed the experimental result. So, yes. so Jock has some um, um, physics comments. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to discuss that. Um, Sorry, yeah, that was from right at the beginning. Um, ah, the this this is a comment, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you do know that um, you probably already know the work. God, I got to take my headphones off. Um, of um, like a Gilchy Gooky Gilkey Hansen and Hawkins and Gibbon constructs like lots of examples of which Tabnut is one one example so these are all gravitational instantons they're called uh and they're all of a similar structure but they have different sort of topo topologies um so i can if you don't know about those i can send you the references to them um, yeah 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 uh, yeah well everything what we we did is purely local so we we, we don't um understand here uh, global uh, things. Uh, although uh, the fact that all these solutions are polynomials allow us to extend that globally and, and maybe there could be also interesting global uh, results. Right. So this, um, uh, <coughs> the, the uh, solutions you refer to is in uh, classical dimension four, or is it also in higher dimensions? Yeah, no, these are all dimension four. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, it, I, I have no idea if these higher dimensions make sense in physics. They, they may not. So this is really um, purely mathematical interest in um, right. how does that generalize into higher dimensions? So yeah, the, the, there is definitely um, use for this in higher dimensions in physics. So uh, there is an enormous amount of literature um, on Suzuki Einstein manifolds in dimension five, believe it or not. Um, so this is interesting because there's this thing called holography. So when you study gravity in these um, dimensions, so it's, it's actually 10 dimensional. So it's some anti de Sitter space that's five dimensional. So that would be um, the, the sort of thing you're looking at uh, to get with a Cartesian product of S5. Um, so it needs to be 10 dimensional for string theory reasons. But then there's this thing of philography where if you study gravity um, in this background, that's equivalent to by some amazing results to studying strong, like a, a strongly coupled field theory in four dimensions. I mean, this is sort of ridiculous. So people use this, they study gravity in these um, geometries to make predictions about um, strongly coupled fluid dynamics. And these predictions actually seem to work. 
So it's, it's sort of amazing. So there is definitely use for this in, in higher dimensions, um, but I need to, yeah, maybe we can, um, I can, I can send these uh, papers I'm thinking of to you and, and, and yeah, see. Yeah, that would be good. I think e even better to somehow discuss it in person. I'm, I'm, I'm not a good reader, especially in, in physical papers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not my area, but I, I, yeah, I, know, yeah. I, know, I know enough to know where to find the yeah. references. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, also something we have been uh, communicating with our collaborators quite intensively in the last weeks is uh, the existence of electromagnetic fields, whatever that is in higher dimension on, yeah. on those uh, higher dimensional space times. Right. And uh, well, that was, was also quite interesting. So I, 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 Yeah, so, so these examples I'm thinking of have these high dimensional generalizations of electromagnetic fields. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, so basically they're like forms. So uh, either odd or even dimensional forms, depending on what theory you're studying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, e exactly. Yes, yeah. Well, I look look forward to discuss that uh, further, and I think that's the main purpose of these talks that um, uh, you you start some conversation, which is I'm ongoing. Sorry. Um, yeah. so, so maybe I can stop the recording now at least. Um, I'll give you a